What's going on, everyone? This is Eric with Full Man MMA, and today I am joined once again by UFC featherweight Chase Hooper. Chase, how are you? Good, just uh, hanging out, getting ready for that next fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any updates on that so far? I was uh, going to say it's been a little over six months since we last saw you fight against Steven Peterson. Uh, what's the latest? Yeah, I we've been trying to. Uh, I was hoping, hoping for December, hoping for January, hoping for February, but it's looking like maybe March or April. Uh, should be having uh, a good conversation with uh, with the matchmakers here. You know, any day now, um, they should be getting back to us with some names. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to get back in there uh, as soon as possible. Awesome. I was going to say, it's been your last five fights have been very consistent. June, December, June, December, June. Uh, so you've had yeah. a little bit more time off uh, between fights this time around. Uh, what's the biggest thing that you've been focusing on during this downtime? Uh, honestly, just um, I feel like you know, letting, letting all the, you know, little nagging injuries heal, which is always good, but, um, you know, just trying to become a more well-rounded fighter overall and just kind of having more confidence in my abilities, uh, you know, just kind of all around. That's, uh, I feel like that's kind of been a big thing is, you know, the last fight I, I could have pursued the striking a little more if I'd been more confident and that, you know, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, it's just trying to get more confident and kind of, uh, you know, utilizing those skill sets uh, to their full extent, whether it's the striking or the wrestling or the uh, the jujitsu side of things. Well, last time we spoke, uh, I think you had just spent some time with Wonder Boy in South Carolina. I know you were with Ben Askren as well. Uh, what, what's it been like uh, the past few months? You've been working with any other big names since then? Uh, I went down to Wonder Boys another probably one or two times since since the fight, and. Um, yeah, it's been good. Uh, you know, it's good to go down there and, and spar those guys that are super specialized in, in their striking. Um, and then, you know, kind of have, because their, their classes are so, um, like well-structured and they're, you know, they'll really like harp on the details with the, the striking overall, which I feel like was my biggest thing is I was making a lot of like fundamental issues that are kind of, you know, taking away from the speed and the power and then, you know, having me out of position um but it, it's good to kind of have those other eyes to kind of look and like uh you know just yell at you for different stuff than you're than you're used to and uh yeah no it's, it's been great been training hard and uh yeah i've been getting a lot more confident in kind of all of my abilities so uh yeah hopefully that'll show in in the next fight here awesome uh i wanted to congratulate you too because you just earned your black belt uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, was that a surprise for you? I know um, the instructors, they tend to do it a little differently depending on where you are and who you are. Uh, or did you kind of see this coming? Uh, I actually got it probably back in March or April or something, but it's it's just been kind of a, like a low key thing. I don't know. It's it's like a, it's it's one of those things where like some people don't necessarily fit the belt that they have. Like someone might have a black belt, but they're not like, they don't have like the toughness or the um I don't know the teaching ability to like be the belt that they have um where I, I've kind of felt like I've been more the opposite like maybe a little ahead in those ways but it's you know I, I was in no rush to get the black belt um you know in itself I, I still try to have the mentality of not being a black belt I guess like I don't try to go around and be like hey guys like you know, walking around with that, like, uh, douchiness, I guess. I don't know. Some people kind of have that. Um, I don't know. Like I, I still kind of look and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. You know, like when I have it on that type of thing, but, um, I don't know. It's, it's been a long time coming. I've been training for, you know, 13 or 14 years now training, you know, five days a week, uh, doing jujitsu. Um, yeah. So, you know, the skill set's hopefully there to match it. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a cool, like, thing to put on the resume, and, uh, yeah. Well, you uh, definitely got to put it to use against uh, Hanada Moikano a couple weeks back at Fury Grappling. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on how you thought the match uh, against Hanada went and just being a part of the event as a whole. Yeah, the event was super cool. Um, Fury uh, Grappling runs a really nice show, and uh, it was cool just kind of interacting with uh, – you know, all these other fighters and stuff, uh, these high level guys like Clay Guida, uh, Cerrone, um, you know, just getting to, you know, see those guys and like casually just talk with them, that type of thing. 
Uh, the match itself was honestly like not as fun as I was hoping. Um, he went in there with a very specific like style. I don't know. I, I think he probably had more to lose uh, from, you know, like playing an open style and like having fun with the match where I, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to do that. And I was trying to, you know, kind of show off my jujitsu versus like trying to win necessarily because he was very content with like, playing that really small like very tight like wrestler-ish type of game um yeah so it wasn't as fun as, as i thought it'd be but you know yeah is what it is and uh yeah no it was good experience though to get in there with a guy like that who's you know fought these guys like cub swanson uh you know jose aldo brian ortega he's fought all those guys he's been in the mix for like a minute um so it's cool to get that high level experience uh, going against some of those, uh, you know, someone of that caliber and especially a weight class up, which was nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was at, uh, like around 170. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, closer to my walking weight. So I made it easy. You know, that's definitely nice. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, Hanano Moikano used to be a featherweight. Like you said, he moved up. Um, but at the top of your division right now, we got some pretty interesting news earlier in the week that uh, Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway was off. So he's going to be taking on the Korean zombie as a fellow fight fan. I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on that fight? A little bit of a surprising matchup. Yeah, but I, it does make a lot of sense when you look at the rankings, like he's the closest guy um, aside from Ortega, Max and Yair, um, which Yair's coming off the loss to Max Holloway pretty recent. So I, I feel like he probably needs that time to recover. Ortega was, uh, Volkanovski's last fight. And it, it wasn't close enough to deserve a rematch. And then, uh, you know, Max obviously was, was the intended, uh, guy to step in there, but you know, if those three guys can't do it, then it, it makes a lot of sense for Korean zombie. Um, you know, just for the fact that he's ranked number four and if one through three are out, then, you know, that, that should make sense at least on paper. Yeah. Do you think uh, Volkanovski holds onto the belt or do you think Korean zombie could be a real problem for him? Uh, I think it's a lot closer of a matchup than people think. Um, you know, maybe, maybe similar to um, how I felt people were kind of just assuming that Dustin Poirier was going to beat Oliveira. Like it's a lot closer matchup than people think on paper. Uh, Korean zombie's got crazy good striking. He's got really good grappling. Um, yeah, we'll see how he how he's able to put it to work against Volkanovski. Um, if he were to win, though, that would shake up the division quite a bit, and that, that'd make things fun again. Um, yeah, I I'm liking to see how it how it's going to turn out here. What next week? Uh, yeah. Uh, what so. for Volkanovski and Korean Zombie? Yeah. yeah. When is that? That's that might be a couple weeks down the line. Um, I'm curious to see what happened to Max Holloway. I know Ariel Hawani said earlier he knows, but he's not allowed to tell us. So maybe that news will come out soon. Um, I want to get into the fun stuff now with you. You've been getting into Twitch and uh, more recently the YouTube game, trying to put us out of, uh, out of business. Well, what's the inspiration there with uh, Twitch streaming and getting into YouTube? Was that something you always wanted to do or been inspired more recently? Yeah, the, the Twitch streaming, I, I've definitely been wanting to try out for a little bit. Um, you know, because it's like, I I'm gaming all the time anyways. And it, uh, you know, now I can start writing that stuff off on my taxes. Um, that's always fun, but you know, like I wanted to get a PC for a long time and then, you know, it's like, how, how do I kind of make the most of, I guess, like the little bit of, uh, recognition that I have right now is like, you know, give the Twitch thing a try. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's like, um, you know, you get to game and then hang out with other dudes and stuff and like just talk shit all day. So it's, it's fun. Um, and the YouTube side of things, I don't know, like, uh, like the last time I was at wonder boys, we got to film some, uh, some fun stuff for his YouTube channel. And I was like, Oh, this isn't too bad. And I, I have like, um, like I did video production and stuff in high school. So I already have like some editing and like filming type of knowledge, you know, at least rudimentary skills to kind of get that done. So it's kind of, uh, you know, again, another way to kind of keep your name out there and stay, um, stay active and like engaging with people. Cause, uh, I don't know, Instagram and Twitter are, are, you know, more the business side of things, I guess, where YouTube, I feel like I can kind of put out the longer form content and still kind of have fun with it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, a lot of fun it is. I was on the Twitch chat earlier and 
There's some funny guys in there, I gotta say. Can't yeah. talk about exactly what they were saying on here. Don't want to get demonetized, but um, <laughs> we're gonna link all that in the description below. Uh, the Twitch, like I said, a lot of fun, and uh, you've been killing it with a couple of videos I've already put out on YouTube. So that's been fun to see. Um, yeah. Gotta commend you as well on the Twitter account. Uh, you have one of the funniest Twitters in the MMA community too. Everyone loves you there. I see you going back and forth with uh, prominent members of the uh, uh, MMA Twitter community. But uh, you sent out one tweet a couple weeks ago that I wanted to ask you about. It was the night of the Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley 2 fight. Um, of course, Tyron Woodley got knocked out pretty brutally. Um, it was kind of heartbreaking for a lot of us MMA fans. But you actually said that you expected it. You tweeted, it's not the result that I wanted, but it's definitely the one that I was expecting. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, I feel like, you know, Woodley is, is so, in his last couple fights, had shown that he was so gun shy um i don't know and then you know based on the last fight i'm sure he kind of felt jake's power a little more and like you know started to respect him um and then you know probably obviously didn't want to get knocked out or something in the second fight so i i think that's kind of his style is when he's like a little more scared to um engage as he like sits back quite a bit which again like one of the best ways to get to someone to stop punching you is to, you know, punch them first mm -hmm. or disrupt it. And I, I think it actually, um, the first rounds from both of those fights, both the first and the second were very similar with Woodley kind of sitting back and like letting, uh, letting Jake kind of dictate the pace and, uh, put the pressure on him, which is not, um, you know, not the best way to start off a fight. Um, a lot of high level boxers do that, but they do it in a, more controlled way they're not necessarily like letting the guy overtake them and they're not not necessarily uh like not throwing a single punch in the round type of thing um yeah i don't know i just feel like jake probably got a ton of confidence from the last fight and woodley got um you know his confidence taken away what what bit that he had and uh you know i i think it's another thing where it's like um you're fighting someone where Woodley's the MMA guy. So he's having to work on the wrestling, the grappling, like the jiu-jitsu and the striking, um, where Jake Paul is literally just focusing on the boxing. So it's like you're fighting someone at what they're good at when you're trying to do like so many things at once. Um, so they're able to, you know, literally focus on just the boxing. And Woodley was probably doing that for the camp, you know, like versus Jake Paul, who's probably, that's just all he's doing right now. Um, so it's like fighting someone who's specializing in this specific sport with a specific rule set. Um, that's like so much more closed off and that it, it's, it's a lot easier for them to gain that huge amount of, uh, you know, skill level when it's, when it's so much more, uh, limited. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. So what do you think Jake's ceiling is in the sport of boxing? I mean, regardless of how he does in fights, I, I think people will pay to watch him whether, they want to see him get beat up or whether they want to see him beat somebody up. He's a, uh, he's definitely proven that he's, you know, one of the bigger names in boxing out of nowhere. Like, um, and those brothers have kind of shown in the past that they can just kind of pick up whatever. And then they already have this fan base that follows them. Mm -hmm. and, and with boxing, the way that it is, it's, it's very like, I don't know. It's a lot of older people are, are in the fan base for boxing and it's, it's not a huge, uh, I don't know. It's not as huge of a draw as it used to be um, where the Paul brothers are able to bring in that younger audience. And uh, yeah, I, I think as long as they want to do it, they'll, they'll keep making money. Yeah, definitely. I'm wondering just uh, out of curiosity, what your thoughts are on him personally, just because we're pretty close to the same age. Uh, you're 22. Um, you know, we kind of grew up at that time, seeing him come up on YouTube, probably having some mixed feelings about him. So I'm wondering uh, you know, what your thoughts are on, on him, especially now that he's talking about, you know, fighter pay and fighter unionization. I'm wondering if you think that that's, you know, out of the goodness of his heart or if there's something deeper there. Uh, I, I definitely thought he, he went through like a douchey phase kind of coming up. Um, and I, I kind of held that belief for a long time, but I feel like he's kind of taking it. He's, uh, you know, like pursuing the sport in a, in a decent way. Like he's not just necessarily taking these easy fights. He's kind of, um, you know, making his way in a sport. And it's like, that's, that's the beautiful thing about 
combat sports is you learn how much respect you should have for someone based on their ability. Like you have to respect someone like Jake for his ability to, you know, knock out former world champion Tyron Woodley, that type of thing. Um, and I think a lot of, a lot of his like shtick is for the camera. Like, I think he's probably a lot more laid back from what I've seen, like little clips and stuff. He's a lot more laid back in person, it seems. And, uh, you know, his, his uh, older brother also seems that way. So I, I think they're just kind of, you know, doing the McGregor thing. They're, they're turning it up for the camera. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're decent guys probably in, in person. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have anything against them. And I, I definitely respect that they're, um, you know, taking, taking fights and, uh, you know, not just kind of sitting behind the screen and, like, calling all these people out. Um, they're doing it and then they're trying to fight them. Um, and that's, that's, you know, uh, a lot of people don't do that anymore. So I, I can respect them for that at least. Yeah. Well said, uh, Chase wanted to thank you. That was the last question that I had. I know I've been bothering you for weeks to come on again, uh, through Twitter. So I wanted to give you the floor now, anything you want to shout out, promote, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. I I'm horrible at getting back to people sometimes. <laughs> I apologize for that. No, uh, don't worry. I don't know. I got the YouTube thing starting. So uh, that's somewhere on Google. You can find it, I'm sure. Uh, I'll, I'll try to work on getting some links up on, on my own social media. But I got the Twitch, uh, see who 556, twitch.tv. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's about it. I'm, uh, yeah. Well, Appreciate awesome. you. We'll link all that below. Yeah, of course, Chase. Thank you so much for joining me today. I uh, can't wait to see what's next for you in 2022. Sweet. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe to Full Man MMA. And while you're at it, make sure to hit the bell icon as well so you never miss an update from us.